despair and he changed me. You know, like, a bloke just walks past and don't even look. <laughs> Never do. Except now and then. It's not bad work. <laughs> uh, get a few bob. I do daft things, me. Uh, <laughs> not right in the head. Like, you wouldn't think it, but when I had my flat, I had a bit more of a clue. Like, like when I was on the double, I had this idea. I was, I was walking past his house, and, and there's this guy up on the roof, right? And like, he's fixing an aerial, and uh, <laughs> I think, nice ladder. I think I could use that. <laughs> when I got it back to mine, I realised I left him up on the roof, like, air in one hand, screwdriver in the other. <laughs> what I did was, I used to... I used to knock on people's doors and ask them if they wanted the guys clearing. Like, 20 quid a go, and... I mean, I wouldn't knock on everyone's door. I'd make sure that there was, like, weeds poking out, and... Sometimes I'd put the weeds up there myself. Like, you've got to use your initiative, haven't you? I made a fair few bob. Only... Like, this one day I knocked on this door and... Well... <laughs> door was open. There was no-one about, so... <laughs> Spare any change, mate. Not a bad little spot for this normally. Right. Not to daylight, but you know what I mean. Like, I was brought up in the 80s, yeah, and in the 80s, <laughs> you were led to believe that, you know, if you went around people's houses during the day, that like, all these bored housewives in like <laughs> see through negligees, <laughs> like gagging for a shag. <laughs> I did make a few bob, only one day I fell off the ladder. That's where I developed vertigo. Next day I went up on the ladder and I, I looked down and just started to spin like cracks in the flagstone, like <clears throat> there were cracks in pairs of glasses I was wearing. And sparingly changed me. You know. I got back from London yesterday. <laughs> I skipped the train, but I spent an hour in the toilet. Um, <laughs> hiding from the conductor and... Oh, I stunk of shit, mate. I tell you, and someone kept knocking on the door, like... <laughs> like, you finished in there, you finished in there. <laughs> I just groaned, like, oh... <laughs> And he went away, and I came out, and like I found a place to sit, like one of them free newspapers, and I was trying to read it, but like the drum, the drum of the train, and don't suppose you got a fag on you, have you, mate? Or, like some tobacco. Gagging. Anyway, I'm, I'm, I'm sat on one of them chairs, like where there's a table, right? And I'm travelling backwards, and I don't like that. This woman sits opposite me, and straight away she's on her phone, and there's this kid next to me, and like a right snotty little teenager. Right? He's there with his mum and his dad, and they were a bit posh, and obviously he's going through his rebellious stage because like he's got a pierced eyebrow and like this rancid band T-shirt. <laughs> right, he's fishing about in his rucksack and oh, gets out his phone and he fiddles about with it and puts his headphones in. And the music starts and he's shaking his head and I'm thinking, fuck, 
this line. All I hear is this muffle of drums and distorted bass and over the top I can hear the lyrics like burn motherfucker burn <laughs> motherfucker burn and I think I could really do with a fag. I used to let you smoke on trains. Right. The only other time I've been on the train was when they used to let you smoke. And I fucked it up. Right. They asked me whether I wanted smoking or non-smoking, and like a dick, I said non-smoking. Because I thought like, yeah, I'm an addict, but it's too much like tempting fate, isn't it? You buy a ticket that says smoking and you're asking for trouble. You see what I mean? Like, I got a thing about trains. Well, not so much about trains, but like, train crashes, like, you know. Hatfield or uh, Labrick Grove. And I didn't want to push it. Like, I, I didn't want to, like, make the train crash. If you think about it, you can make it happen. And then there's this, this ringtone. Like, the birdie song. Like, da -da 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 -da. like who has a fucking birdie song as a ringtone unless you really want to piss someone off, isn't it? And, I'm looking around me and I'm, I'm sweating now and like I'm getting one of my headaches to start and it's like an axe right through my fucking head. The train's drum, drum, drum and it's making it worse and she's on her phone like really, really, really and then I'm going backwards like I'm getting sucked into some sort of vortex and it's like green and blue and rushing past me and it's like all I want to do is scream, and it's just and whoosh, whoosh, drum, drum, really, really, and I want to explode. And I look up, and I see this emergency hammer, and it says, in case of emergency, break glass. And I'm like, I'm like, this is an emergency. And I'm thinking, this is a fucking crisis. Like, but then I'm thinking, the emergency hammer is behind emergency glass. So you need a hammer to get the hammer. Like, who thought that up? Like, it's no wonder it's all fucked. Got enough for a cup of tea, mate? So, so I'm spitting feathers and I can hardly swallow. But I would have liked that hammer. <laughs> I would have liked to have had that hammer. Like a trophy. Like, mount it on a plinth and put it on the mantelpiece. Just for emergencies, like. I saw her yesterday. She said she didn't love me anymore. She said... She said she felt like I was weighing her down. She was with him. I don't blame her. I said... It's best we stay mates, right? for the sake of the kids. <laughs> Fuck that, she says. <laughs> I don't want Ryan and Zoe growing up with a thief for a dad. <laughs> best if I stay away and never make contact. I got all choked up. <laughs> it's fucking pathetic. Like I'm blubbering like a child. <sighs> she said. She said it's best if you go. So I went to the White Swan. 
and it's nice. And I get a pint of black sheep and I go outside. I sit by the water. And there's this girl. She's about Zoe's age and and she's picking blossom and she's standing on the railings by the side of the river and, and she's got this blossom and oh, it's wonderful. It's frothy like foam. And she's throwing it into the water. It travels through the air. Uh, so soft, just so slow, like falling and the most gentle thing in the world, like it hits the water without making a sound and it just drifts on down the river. I looked at that girl and not a care in the world. I don't know what happened, I don't know why I did it, but next thing I know, I'm walking off with her hand in hand, and as I get around the corner, she's like, Mummy, I want my mummy, and <laughs> I'm like, shut up, just, just shut up! <laughs> I'm dragging her. I'm dragging her behind me, and she's crying, Mummy, Mummy. I just let go of her, I, and I run as fast as I can till I'm miles away, and, and I stop to catch my breath. I just, I just don't know why I did it. <laughs> I just can't think. Despair any change, mate.